Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, an unfortunate event took place in the separation line, more specifically in the demilitarized zone in the Syrian occupied Golan, took place where an irresponsible armed group took action against the peacekeepers deployed in the Golan and held them hostages. At the beginning of this unfortunate act, the armed terrorist group claimed responsibility publicly in a YouTube and they described their hostages as war prisoners. The Syrian government was involved immediately in consultations with the UNDOF commands on the spot over there, as well as in here, through myself and the Under Secretary uh, for Peacekeeping Operations, in order to liberate these peacekeepers from their abductors and release them and bring them back safely to their headquarter. We have been in close consultations with the United Nations, both in here and in Damascus, and the Syrian government is committed to rescue these peacekeepers, to put an end to these irresponsible acts by the armed groups and the, armed, and the terrorist armed groups operating in this very sensitive area where the UNDOF forces are deployed. This terrorist act took place for the first time since 1974. So any one of us should ask himself or herself the question, why did it happen now? Why did it take place now? And why UNDOF is targeted by the terrorist armed groups? You may hear many versions, but the most important part of the story is the following. Number one, the Syrian government has warned the United Nations, represented by the Secretariat, as well as by, by the DPKO, for months against terrorist activities of the armed terrorist groups in the demilitarized zone facilitated by Israel. The proofs are the following. The Israelis rescued almost a month and a half ago a Jordanian citizen Salafist belonging to the Salafist groups in Jordan who crossed the demilitarized zone and went into the occupied part of the Syrian Golan under Israeli control. He was treated, hospitalized by the Israelis and then returned safely to Jordan through the demilitarized zone and the separation line. Then Two weeks ago, seven terrorists from the same armed groups who took the Filipino contingent staffers hostages were also rescued by the Israelis through the separation line, treated in the Israeli hospitals, and returned at an undisclosed place 
on the line of separation, according to the Israeli official statement. So that proves in itself that the Israelis are cooperating with these armed groups and, and terrorist groups and facilitating their movements and their, their crossing uh, of the separation line, illegally of course, in a flagrant and blatant breach of the Disengagement Forces Agreement of 1974. Number two, the terrorist armed group, as you know, claimed responsibility and they showed themselves in a YouTube where they described these innocent peacekeepers as war hostages. Dramatically speaking, amazingly speaking, you name it, these war prisoners, according to what these armed groups said, became suddenly protected by the armed groups from uh, the Syrian government's fire. So they, they moved their statement from considering these innocent staffers of the UNDOF from the Filipino contingent as war prisoners to, no, they are not war prisoners in our hands anymore. We took them, we captured them to protect them. Of course, they did that under the pressure of the capitals, which are sponsoring these terrorist groups in Syria and instructing them how to act and what to say. All these details are very well known to the Secretariat, very well known to the United Nations, very well known to the Security Council. I myself, on behalf of my government, forwarded to the Security Council, the Secretary General and his Under Secretary for Peacekeeping Operations, dozens of letters recently about what I'm talking about. Namely speaking, the Israeli violation of the Disengagement Forces Agreement and the jeopardization of the UNDOF staffers in the Golan. So no, number one, the Israeli authorities assume the full responsibility of the deterioration of the situation in the demilitarized zone in the Golan and the Israelis are responsible for the, any danger or threats that might occur to the UNDOF staffers in the Golan. Number three, number four, the Israelis, by doing so, would have in their mind the idea of repeating the same mistake they did in South Lebanon after the occupation of South Lebanon at the end of the 70s, 1978, where they created what they called a zone tampon, a safe zone, run by a proxy militia headed by a Lebanese officer at that time. And as you remember, this area stayed in South Lebanon for almost 20 years until the full liberation by the Lebanese resistance of this area in 2000. So one of the goals of the Israelis and their proxies would be an imitation of what they did in South Lebanon. But to do so, they need to get rid of the UNDOF from the area. This is why these armed terrorist groups have targeted UNDOF contingents. They started with, uh, uh, before that, with other contingents. And this is why the president of Croatia decided to withdraw, as you know, the Croatian contingent from the UNDOF. The Japanese are thinking about it also, to withdraw their contingent, and now the Filipinos. So somebody is targeting 
on purpose, these peacekeepers, United Nations peacekeepers deployed on the Golan in order to create a proper ground for the Israelis and their proxies to repeat what they did in Lebanon. But that will not fly because Syria, the Syrian government, will not tolerate that and will not allow that. And the international community, represented here by the Security Council, will not also tolerate uh, uh, the Israelis and their proxies and some Arab capitals, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and, and then Turkey also, to play this very dangerous game.